Uh, this is a this is a dumb story. Uh, well, it's a continuation of a dumb story I've co covered in the past. You, you recall that I've talked about how some schools in Japan have rules still uh, about the um, there's the famous ones about the hair color and uh, about the underwear color and stuff like that. Uh, rules that students are not allowed to be dating, and the idea that if a teacher or someone from the staff or even a parent sees a student outside of the school that looks like they're on a date, they can report them to the school and they can be suspended from school for being seen at the movies on a date on a weekend um you know rules like that but of course even more um eh, even worse the rules on things like underwear needing to be white that so many schools in japan actually quite widespread have rules like this but apparently what happens as a result is that some teachers of elementary school students feel like oh they are entitled to do underwear inspections of the girls Combine the creepiness of that with the fact that Japan has no sex offender register and the fact that even people who are convicted of sex crimes it came up last year that, that many of them were easily finding ways of getting employed. Um, there's no background checks. There's uh, And to the extent there's a risk of being outed by somebody who knows what you're doing, they just change their name or do something like that. And a lot of sex offenders, in fact, offenders who were sex offenders against students as teachers who went to jail for it were getting back into the teaching profession and teaching. Um, the Ministry of Education says that they're trying to tidy that one up, but you combine that with the fact that schools have rules that allow teachers to inspect, um, you know, boys and girls underwear, you know, um, this led to a lot of bad <laughs> things. Um, and even where it didn't lead to bad things, it's just a stupid look. And uh, parents, you know, a lot of people have started saying, why is why are these rules necessary? Um, particularly prominent in more conservative parts of Japan, like West Japan, and based on this sort of particular spat of um, publicity, saying that schools who have these rules must have them because they, the, the, the people who decide the rules are a bunch of perverts who want to get off. Um, yeah, that that seemed to be what did the trick. A lot of the schools said, you know, well, let's change that. Let's change that school rule that we can uh, inspect all the children's underwear. Thank heavens. I mean, again, I'm I'm in Tokyo, and uh, I I don't profess to have a, a a deep knowledge of the whole you know school system here. But you see these stories come out now and again. Of course, the hair color one is a classic one because you have um, mixed heritage kids, even Japanese kids, occasionally will have curly hair or brown hair. Uh, it, it still happens, like light, light colored hair. And the school rules that all hair has to be black. You know, the, the crazy stories that used to get back in the 90s that even like uh, exchange students from Australia, like blonde exchange students were like forced uh, because someone looked at the school rules that said all students have to have black hair. They forced the exchange students to dye their hair black so that they would appear the same as the Japanese kids. Uh, I mean, can you imagine? Um, so, you know, uh, baby steps. These rules are now, they, they draw attention. Um, things like the hair color thing, when they come up, they are rare, but they still come up. Uh, but good to see that, uh, again, a hundred years too late, but it's good to see progress being made. So, uh, yeah, progress.